Yes, we have a miracle working God. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. I uh, titled this talk, What is the Abundance of Your Heart? And if you could turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter 12. And in verse 33, Jesus here is speaking. Let me start my clock here. And he says, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak of good things, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart, or out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. And here we have Jesus talking about, uh, about us bearing forth good fruit in our life. But it's more than that. The Lord's talking about us being a good tree because the tree is what brings forth the fruit. And, and we need to make sure in our life that, that we are that tree on good soil, our roots sinking deep into the word of God, into Jesus Christ. And then the Lord promises that if that's the case, we'll bear good fruit. And, uh, and notice he says as well, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so there's the question, what is the abundance of your heart? We can, we can gauge how our heart is doing. And this, this verse reveals how we gauge it. How do we gauge what, how the tree of our life is doing? which of course is going to bear that good fruit if we're firmly established in Jesus Christ then we're going to bear good fruit good things are going to come forth out of our lives of course sometimes that fruit we may see a fruit that uh, that's coming forth that that isn't very good and maybe it's anger or or uh, jealousy or we're really afraid of something so afraid that that it's it's affecting our walk in the lord and because we're a good tree and we're founded in Jesus Christ, we're able to recognize, oh, wait a minute, this isn't a good fruit. I'm going to pluck that off. The Lord prunes it and uh, helps us to see where we're headed in a wrong direction, perhaps. And he founds us again on his word, on his truth, and, and we're that good tree. But the way we gauge how our heart is doing, this verse says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we ask ourselves this question. What is the abundance of your heart? Our mouth reveals it. What we speak, what we say, is going to show how our heart is doing. And if, if our mouth is speaking words of confidence, of trust, of faith in God, even in the midst of, of difficulty, we're, we're saying things like God's, God's going to handle this. We're reaching out to brothers and sisters for prayer. And um, we're, we're putting God first. And we're speaking that. That reveals the condition of our heart. And, and I, I find that such an amazing thing that uh, I can see my brothers and sisters. And uh, like I see all of you here on Zoom. And I can... I can just think of your testimony and, I, and, I, and, and the things you have said over the years. We've, we've been with each other for a long time. And, and I can think of, of the things you've said in your testimony and just things you've shared. And what I see is the abundance of your heart, an abundance that shows a, a, a love for God, a desire for truth, a, de a desire to serve the Lord. And, and, and in, in, in doing so, in showing each other that abundance as we speak, 
we're encouraging each other. We're encouraging each other to, to be that good tree that's going to bear the good fruit and, and, and honor the Lord in all we do. And so this is how Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. The good treasure of our heart is serving the Lord. If that's your treasure, if that's your desire, even if you feel right now you're not doing a very good job of it, well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Your desire is to grow. Praise the Lord. Your desire is to serve Jesus Christ, to know him more, to love him, to honor him. That's good treasure. That is good fruit. And, and as, we, as we just speak that confidence to the Lord in prayer and to each other, we're encouraging one another to, to be on that good foundation of Jesus Christ. Let's just see this idea as we move on a little bit. Go, go to Proverbs 4, please. Proverbs chapter 4. And in verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We've just read that Jesus said, out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak. What is the abundance of your heart? Keep thy heart. That means guard your heart. The heart here is not just speaking about the heart that pumps blood in our body. That's, that's not what's being spoken of here. Back, back in uh, when, when the uh, people heard Jesus use the word heart, they would have known that this, this, this word means, the, if you look it up in your concordance, it'll, it speaks, speaks, speaks of our soul, our mind, as the foundation of our, of, of our thoughts and our feelings, our passions, our desires, um, affections, that type of thing. It includes our soul, our emotions, all of that is our heart. We have to guard our heart with everything we have because this world is trying to pull us away from the things of God and pull our heart towards other things, pull, pull our emotions, our feelings, our, our desires, our hopes towards anything but God. That's the way of this world. And, and we have to be aware of that. And so we guard our heart, the scripture is saying, for out of it are the issues of life. This word issues is really amazing. I was looking it up and, and when it comes up in other instances, it's, it's talking about borders. It talks about the, the issue being like the, the borders of different lands as you look it up. And so if you, it's this idea of borders, our heart, our emotions, our feelings, we have to give them borders. The border that we give our life is right here. It's the word of God. It's the word of God that, that puts a break on our life and says, ha, wait a minute. No, don't go down that road. Don't go down the road of seeking power or, um, or seeking the things of this world. That's an empty road. And so we let the word of God be our border and to give us good advice and good direction. Praise the Lord. And, and so in right along the lines of what Jesus was saying, out of the abundance of heart, your, of your heart, your mouth will speak. Look at the next verse. Put away from the froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Amazing, isn't it? Jesus is saying, our words show the abundance of our heart. This, this verse in Proverbs, written by Solomon thousands of years before Jesus came on this earth, he's saying a very similar thing. Watch your mouth, right? We get filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God. As we turn away from our sin, we get baptized, and we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Notice, notice the Bible doesn't just say we're filled with the Spirit. It says you're filled with the Holy Spirit, set apart from the things of this world, which means that our, our life and our words must show that the Holy Spirit of God is inside of us, right? And so if I'm at work and my friends are talking, uh, and the guys at work, they're, they're talking and they're tossing in their cuss words and everything, what do I do? Do I join in? 
do I just cuss right along with them and and uh, and and make myself no different to this world? No, I don't, uh, and I don't want to. I make a stand for the Lord. I let I guard my heart. I let the Word of God be a border of my life, and 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 I I show that I'm different. And uh, and sometimes people say things like, "Oh, Ward's here. Um, we can't say that." And because they they know what they're doing in the speech, they're talk talk talking is trash talk, and I'm not a part of that. But praise the Lord. The warning is here. Let thine eyes look right on. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. Let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And with that, there's the desire of, I want to do right. I want to please my dad, my father. I want to honor him in everything I'm doing. And if I, if I mess up in some way, I, I want the Lord to show me and I want to correct it because I want to walk hand in hand with my father. And, and I want the abundance of my mouth to honor the Lord. I go in people's homes and they say things like, this is when I'm, I'm working on their refrigerator. And they say things like, aren't you scared to go in people's homes? And uh, because of COVID and everything, I say, no, I, I trust the Lord. He's, he's with me. No matter what happens, he's with me. And uh, I'm going to praise the Lord regardless of what happens. And the Lord's my hope. And sometimes it gives me a good opportunity to preach the gospel to him as well. Praise the Lord. Let's allow our words to honor the Lord in all we're doing. Praise the Lord. Let that be the abundance of our heart. I think of uh, our brother Daniel, and uh, he, 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 he mentions in his testimony how, how during the time when his family was going through a real crisis, a divorce, how he was, he was having a difficult time, but he just kept seeking the Lord. Little by little, it was hard for him. His health was, was giving him a very difficult time, but the abundance of his heart shone through, and he, he just kept saying and in his testimony as, as he gave it, a few times during 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 that time, you could see the abundance of his heart just wanting to serve the Lord and honor the Lord. I remember there's a there's a few times at meetings where Daniel was there and I knew he was he was all that he was going through and we all did. And he steps out in the gifts and I, I just couldn't help smiling that uh, that here is his desire to serve the Lord to uplift brothers and sisters and he steps forth in the gifts in the midst of all he's going through. And the abundance of his heart speaks. Praise the Lord. Such a, such a great uh, thing that the Lord does in our life that, that we can encourage each other by our words, by that, by that abundance in our heart. Doesn't matter how old we are. Doesn't matter how long we've been in the Lord. Doesn't matter how many scriptures you know. We can let the abundance of our heart come forth. And we can speak to our friends and speak to people we work with and tell them, Jesus Christ is alive. He loves me. He's inside of me. I have the Holy Spirit. I'm going to follow him. And, and that abundance touches hearts and draws people to come to the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to Luke um, chapter 4. Luke 4. We're going to see here the abundance of Jesus Christ as he was in the synagogue just as he was starting his ministry on earth. And he stands up in the synagogue. He's, he's given a, a scroll, whatever they had back then, to stand up and speak. And look at the abundance of, of, of his heart speaking. And as I read these words, I want you to think of yourself. Because the spirit of the Lord is in us. The same spirit that was in Jesus that enabled him to speak right now, these words, is in you and you and I. Excuse me. Praise the Lord. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This is you and I, the same spirit that's on Jesus, standing up in the synagogue, 
is within us. As we just go about our day, whatever we're doing, this same spirit is within us. And let's let the abundance pour forth from us. We, the same spirit has anointed us. We have good news, the gospel, to speak to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it again to the minister, sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. You just can imagine, you probably heard a pin drop in that place. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Praise the Lord. Where we go, people's eyes are fastened on us to see the hope that dwells within us, to see the abundance of our heart. This word abundance of our heart is like an overflowing. It's, it's, it's an overflowing of our heart. What is the overflowing of our heart? This world is trying to get the overflowing of our heart to be that job we're looking for or to be that, that boyfriend or girlfriend that we want or, or to seek after the drugs of this world. This is what the world is trying to get the abundance of our heart to be, to, to be leaning towards, to be desiring. No, that's not our abundance. Our abundance is Jesus Christ. Let him pour forth where you are. Let him think about your friends that you know, the people that you work with that you know. Have you poured forth abundance to them? The abundance of the gospel. Because this same spirit that, uh, that opens the eyes of the blinds, heals the bruised, sets them at liberty, and, and preaches deliverance, all that this same gospel is in us. Because Jesus isn't on this earth anymore. He's in us. He's in his church. He's in his temple, our bodies. Praise the Lord. Let us speak. Okay, go to Acts 13. Paul is preaching the gospel here. He's filled with the Holy Ghost, going about letting the abundance of his heart pour forth. And he comes to this place in verse 6. It says, and when he had gone through the isle unto Paphos, he found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which means son of Joshua. And uh, he's probably referring to Joshua of the Old Testament, a great man of faith. But this guy was far from a great man of faith. He was a, a sorcerer. So he was... He was um, he was seeking things that are after Satan, not God. And it says, verse 7, which was with the deputy, the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. So this guy, Sergius, ah, hear this gospel, hear this abundance that's coming from Paul and Barnabas. I want to hear about it. I need to call for those guys. I want them to come, right? And... Uh, and desire to hear the word of God. People around us, whether they know it or not, and if, 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 if they're the sheep of the Lord, if they'll hear his voice, um, they'll desire to hear what you and I have to say. They'll desire to hear that abundance. But if we keep our mouth closed and don't talk, we don't give them that chance. Paul and Barnabas were ready. All right, Sergius, here we come. We're going to tell you the gospel. We're going to tell you about the abundance that's within us. And this is how we should feel when, when, when we're before people in this world, or even within, with brothers and sisters. We should feel like, I got abundance to share. I'm going to, I'm going to share what the Lord has done for me. Even if it's just a short, quick testimony. That short, quick testimony that you share, scripture you read or whatever, is touching your brother and sister's heart and helping them because you just de you desire to share of your abundance so here comes paul and silas verse eight or paul and barnabas sorry 
Um, yeah, that's right. And uh, verse seven, nope, verse eight. But Elimus, Elimus is actually the same guy in verse six, Bar Jesus. This is a name that, uh, uh, another name that he gave himself. And uh, I think it means wise one. Yes, I think this word Elimus, Elimus means wise, wise, wise man. What a contradiction, right? The guy's a sorcerer. <laughs> wise one, what? He's just got a bunch of lies to tell. That's all he's got. He's got nothing. And uh, incredible. Calls himself the wise man, Elimus, the sorcerer. For so his name by interpretation withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Illimus, what a fool, trying to turn this guy Sergius Paulus from the faith. Paul and, Bar or Paul and Barnabas are there to preach the gospel, and this guy Illimus is, no way, this can't happen. You can't speak to Sergius. I'm going to stop you. I don't want him to have abundance coming from his heart, Sergius. I'm going to stop you from speaking the words of life to him. That's his goal. And we have to realize that as the abundance of our heart, as we just desire to serve the Lord and, and allow this abundance, this overflow to pour forth from us to our friends, to people we work with, to our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters at home and in the Lord, this is our desire. Right? All the people said, that's your desire? Abundance to pour out? Well, great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Get ready for Illimus. Right? Illimus is coming. Illimus, this guy here is coming to turn you away from the faith. Because he doesn't want you to have abundance pouring forth. He doesn't want to see people uh, grow in the Lord and turn to Jesus Christ. Illimus is coming to turn you away from the faith. Expect it. There's going to be Illimuses in your life trying to turn you away. Decide now how you're going to handle it. It might be your best friend, you think. But your best friend actually could change their name to Illimus because they're saying things to you that are turning you away from the things of God. They might say something like, if, if you follow this Jesus, I don't want you to talk to me about this Jesus. And if you do, you're not going to be my friend anymore. Well, Elimus, see you later. We can be a testimony to them. Make a stand. Let them go home and think about it. And maybe your stand will turn them to the Lord. Maybe your stand will turn them away from sorcery, the ways of Satan, which is the way of this world to God because you made a stand. You desired to have your abundance pour forth to that person so that they could see that you wanted to be a tree founded in Jesus Christ, bearing forth that good fruit, that good abundance and draw them to the Lord. It may be a week later they say, you know, I wanna to come to a meeting. I wanna hear about this. It may be five years. With myself, I came to the Lord in 83. You do the math. I'm not sure exactly what that is this second. And none of my family and friends have come to the Lord. If I let them stop me the first time they tried to say, come on, Ward, just have a beer and forget about it. Count it up to a good experience you had in Australia back in 1983 in Townsville. And, and let's party on, right? If I let them affect me, I wouldn't be here today. So regardless of whether they come or go, we have to stand and let this abundance of the Lord pour forth. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to skip through a story here. Let's go to 1 Kings 3. We're going to turn to a man who, who, um, that, who wrote that Proverbs that we read, Solomon, about, remember, guard your heart with all diligence. Or out of it are the issues of life. If we're not willing to guard our heart, to guard this abundance, and to put a border of the word of God around it, then Satan just comes along and picks us off. 
And it was written by this man, Solomon, David's son. And when he first became king in uh, 1 Kings 3, verse 5, it says, In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon a dream by night, and, and God said, Ask what I will give thee. Solomon was a young man at this time. I've read some things that say when he first became king, they think he was under 20. And so that's pretty young. But um, down in verse 6, um, actually, no, I'm going to skip to verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this sight so great a people? When he first became king, God said, what do you want in this dream? Read the whole thing for the sake of time. I'll just give you the brief story. And he says, I just want wisdom, Lord. You fulfilled your word to my father, David, and now I'm king. You said this would happen. Here I am. And God was really pleased with this. This is his desire. This is the notice out of the abundance of the heart. The words your the mouth speaks. The abundance of, a, of his heart is, Lord, just give me wis wisdom. I want to grow. And this is our abundance. Lord, I want to grow. I want to know you more. Uh, sometimes I think I've been in the Lord for 30 plus years. And, I'm, and I think, I feel like I'm, there's so much more to learn. There's so much more of the depths of the love of God to grow in and to, and to, in, to, in, to enjoy, to, to see the, the adventures of the Lord. Um, that uh, I'm, I'm so amazed. And here's this man, young, just give me wisdom. He didn't ask to feed all my enemies, give me great riches, and this type of thing. And God said, because you didn't ask for those things, I'll give it to, to you anyway. But see the abundance of his heart. Also go to 2 Chronicles 7. Solomon ends up building the temple. When the temple's completed, he saw an amazing thing. He gets on his knees and he's praying before God, just saying, Lord, honor your word, honor this house that I've just had built. And when, when, when people are in trouble and they pray to this house, Lord, answer. And when you read the story, he's on his knees before, the, before all of Israel saying these things, right? And just see the abundance of his heart, loving God, building the temple, Lord, answer your people's needs when they come to you. And, and then in verse chapter 7, verse 1, 2 Chronicles 7, 1. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and, in cons and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Solomon saw this, right? He's praying before God. Boom, fire comes down. That's a, that's a pretty neat answer to prayer. Before all the whole nation consumes the sacrifice, the abundance of his heart is honoring the Lord. And he probably thought, wow, this is amazing fire. Where'd that come from? Just choo, down from heaven. Consumed it, right? Well, think about us. The fire of God has come within us by the Holy Spirit. Far more powerful than some flash of lightning coming down from heaven burning the sacrifice the fire that is within us is a fire that has saved our soul a fire that is able to flow abundantly from us and help everyone around us if we will speak if we will be a testimony sometimes just being a testimony a testimony of being a good godly person is more powerful than even speaking and they see this and people are drawn to ask. Praise the Lord. Um, 1 Kings 9, go there. How am I doing for time? Okay. 1 Kings 9. So the abundance of Solomon's heart is give me wisdom, praise to God at the temple, fire comes down, he's doing well, and God warns him. In 1 Kings 9 here, down in verse 6, he says, But if you will at all turn from following me, you or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, 
Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house, meaning the temple, which I have hallowed from my name, will I cast out of my sight. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house, which is high, every one that passeth by, it shall be astonished and shall hiss. They shall say, why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and to this house? And they shall answer, because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have taken hold upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. So it came with a warning. Our salvation, our salvation comes with a warning. The Lord says, walk in my ways. I am coming. Walk in my ways. Because if we don't, we'll reap what we sow. If we don't, we'll turn away from the Lord. And, and it's not, it won't go well for us because we'll be in the world where we won't make it when Jesus comes. And, and just out there in the world on our own, not trusting God, trials and the trials and tribulations still come and will fall. The world will, dis will destroy us. So just as, yes, Solomon was, the abundance of his heart was pouring forth good things. But God said, that's good. Solomon, that's good. Love me. Serve me. Let's have, a, let's have great adventures. I like thinking each day, by the way. Um, I, I, as I, wa I walk my dogs in the morning and I'd be thinking, Lord, I'm, I just want to have an adventure, for, an, an adventure with you today. And whatever that adventure is, whether it's some, a treasure from his word, speaking the gospel, sharing something with saints, I want to have an adventure with you today. Because in the world, what the world calls adventures aren't everlasting. What Jesus gives us is everlasting, good adventures. And, but they come with a warning. The Lord says, follow me. Let's, let's walk together. Praise the Lord. 1 Kings 11, go there. This man, given so much wisdom, the abundance of his heart was incredible. Fire from heaven builds the temple, established probably the most prosperous time in all of Israel. He had great wealth. He turned his back on the Lord. Just incredible. 2 Kings 11, or sorry, 1 Kings 11, verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the Zidonians, the Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after other gods, Solomon Clave unto these in love. Illimus, remember that dude back in Acts? Illimus, here he is again in a different form, in the form of, of lusting after other women. And Solomon, instead of allowing the abundance of his heart to pour forth to God, right? To pour forth only to the Lord. I want to do what's right in God's sight. He allows the overflow of his heart to go towards other women, to go towards immorality, to be pulled that way by 700. He had 700 wives and many other concubines. Just, just can't even imagine that. It's just crazy. But see his abundance. He allowed the abundance of his heart to go towards other things. If the danger is there for him, who wasn't even spirit filled. You and I are spirit filled, but the same dangers are there. The same immorality is there crying out to us from this world, whether it's the pornography or the drugs or the, the party scene, whatever, right? Pulling on each one of us. And you can't allow your, the overflow of your heart to go towards that. It's gotta be for the Lord. And again, remember the borders? It's like, no way, I don't need that. I need Jesus Christ. I need to walk in the spirit. I need to love the Lord. And, and when you read on here, Solomon turned to other gods and, and 
totally turned his back on the Lord. Let's not allow that to happen for us. And if we see any danger signs, just put a border there and say, no, I'm going to follow the Lord. I'm putting a border right here. And um, I've, I've spoken to brothers and sisters in, in the Lord who, uh, one sister in particular I was thinking of, she had some, some guy was coming up to her and, and which was a very nice man saying real good things. And, and uh, she's single. And, and this guy was saying all these nice things. And she was real tempted to follow in a, in a relationship that way. And she put a border up and said, no, I, I'm not going to be involved in that. And, uh, and was a testimony instead for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's go to Acts 13. Where are we here? Okay, we're getting, we're going to close off in Acts 13 here. Acts chapter 13. We were there. Down in verse 48. When the Gentiles heard this, they heard the gospel. They heard Paul and Barnabas continuing to preach the gospel. They were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as ordained to eternal life believed. Paul and Barnabas, they're allowing the abundance of their heart to flow, to speak. This is this will be the result to people that are interested in the gospel, right? It might be your friend. It might be the, that person you work with. They'll be glad if they want to follow the Lord. And if they turn to the Lord in repentance, they get baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. They're ordained to eternal life. But the word of the, And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and chief men of the city, the big shots of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. Again, right? Illamis coming, coming along and trying to stop them. Persecution. You will be persecuted for making a stand for Jesus Christ. It might not be the, uh, the mayor of Fresno or, or the big shots of Fresno coming and knocking on your door saying, don't preach this gospel, right? But it might be our close friends or the people we work with. Either way it comes, it might be our family members. Either way it comes, let's stand. Continue saying in our hearts, Lord, I'm going to let your abundance pour forth from my mouth. These people are lost. These people are in sin. And if I don't make a stand, who's going to? I'm going to, praise the Lord. Verse 51, but they shook off the dust to their feet against them and came unto Iconium. That's right. They, they weren't like, oh, no. Oh, no, we've upset the, uh, the devout and honorable women. Oh, how, how terrible. And the chief men. Oh, my goodness, we've upset them. We better stop speaking this gospel. We don't want to upset these people. Let's, uh, let's change. Let's just, let's just all, all be together and and uh, we'll believe what we believe and you believe what you believe. We're not going to upset you. Go, oh, I'm so sorry. They didn't say that. Shook off the dust. You don't like it. We're going we're gonna to keep preaching, right? So no matter what people do to us, shake the dust off. Pray for them. That shaking the dust and praying for them may convict their heart. Verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. This is the result of allowing the abundance of our heart to speak. You'll be filled with the joy of the Lord, not joy of this world. This is a, this is the source of this joy is not from the world. It's not from the honorable women and the chief men or from their, their job or from the people they knew. It was in the world. It was a joy from heaven, a joy from God's kingdom welling up within them helping them to see that, that as they stood for the abundance of the Lord in their heart by the Holy Ghost, they continued to speak that they'd be provided for always. And the Holy Ghost was right there. So brothers and sisters, as you allow the joy, that abundance to flow forth from your life through our words, through our thoughts, through everything we do, you and I will be filled with the joy and uh, 
and overflowing with the Spirit of God. And uh, praise the Lord. If anybody here is new, we welcome you to turn to the Lord and uh, turn away from the things of this world. It's called repentance. Be baptized as Jesus commands, full immersion underneath the waters. As you bury your life underneath the waters of baptism, and you rise up calling upon the Lord to fill you with the Spirit. You'll speak in tongues. You'll be filled with his abundance, the gifts and fruits of his Spirit as he changes your life. All the people say.